So President Trump was asked by Laura Ingram at, at a forum. And again, I think it also depends on where you're having the forum. This was this town hall in was it New uh, South Carolina. So, be, you know, if you're in South Carolina, you may not be thinking as much about what's happening in Arizona, uh, you know, to the Cary Lake, because mm-hmm. you're in South Carolina and you're following different candidates. Certainly people like Tim Scott, who's, who's from home state. You've also uh, you might just notice different people and the people have actually also been on the, this campaign trail. Uh, which we heard a lot from. So Tim Scott, Ramaswamy, Ron DeSantis. But by the way, I didn't. President Trump did not take that moment. By the way, and I thought it was interesting to even like take a shot at. And I think that shows you too. Like once a primary is over, DeSantis. Yeah, you know, with Trump, he said it's over. That's moving on. Yeah, like if you, if you if you got a uh, if Tr- President Trump started getting polls back showing this is the pick that yeah you know, puts you over the edge. Yeah, they're both in Florida, so there's a little problem there, but. It seems like there's some workarounds. I've seen a lot of people say, "Well, here's how you even, yeah, even work, top level there, there's politicians." Work, there are workarounds. I don't. I don't think that's where he goes. I don't. Uh, I don't think Ron really wants that. And then, of course, he said Christy Nome. Uh, T- Laura Ingram said Christy Nome, and then Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi Gabbard, of course, part of our Seculo team here, and she was on yesterday. We knew she was having some interesting meetings, and she was making a lot of news about right. NATO because she was defending some of President Trump's recent comments about that he's been talking about all the time that people in NATO have got to pay their fair share, that the U.S. cannot be the only uh, person to send the send the resources, to train the armies, and to fight Europe's wars, that they need to invest in their military as well. And she's gone on to defend. But we should play while we get some of these calls cleared. This is kind of how it's all started. This was yesterday with Tulsi Gabbard right here on this broadcast. Tulsi, I wanted to kind of reframe it a bit before we wrap up. Back to sort of the conversation around NATO. You, know, you obviously have seen... A lot of what's happened with President Trump over the weekend, and you had Hillary Clinton coming out making statements. You've obviously been on, uh, dealt with that before, let's just say, and you know what that can mean. But what if NATO members could come into compliance? Do you think uh, at this point as an organization, is this something we should be considering still supporting? I think this is a very real conversation the American people need to have. And the fact that people like Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden don't want us to have this conversation should make us even more eager to force the question on the American people and our representatives in our government. Uh, This kind of analysis has not happened largely because the warmongers in Washington won't allow it. Anytime anyone asks, well, what is the relevance of NATO to our national security today? We know why it was formed originally, and you look through the history of NATO and how the world has changed, and yet NATO really hasn't changed and hasn't asked themselves this question about what their mission is. What's wrong with having the conversation? When Hillary Clinton and others like her respond to people who ask relevant, important questions with smears like you're a Putin puppet or you're a useful idiot or you are just doing the bidding of Putin, those aren't substantive responses. There has to be a very real dialogue about the pros and cons and the very real costs that come from uh, any of our foreign policy decisions that we are making. So I think we should go ahead and take a phone call. Because look, I see, I'm reading your comments. A lot of people understand we brought Tulsi on as a commentator here because We do want to have somewhat of a diverse group of people. If you have Mike Pompeo and you have Tulsi Gabbard, you're going to get very different answers. So these aren't necessarily people who are pitching as vice president or president, someone who can give you, um, within still somewhat of our world, a different point of view. And I feel like that's very important. But Rachel's calling in Texas. She has her thoughts. She's watching on Rumble. Thank you, Rumble, the free speech platform. We appreciate it. You're on the air. Hey, Rachel. Hi. Um, my pick right now today would be Tulsi Gabbard. I think she would do a lot to bridge the gap for independents and moderate Democrats where he's lacking, especially with women. My second choice would be Christy Noem because I just think she's amazing. and She's done a lot for South Dakota. Yeah, Alyssa, I think both are very strong on and for different reasons. I mean, uh, yes, I think having a woman be able to go out and, and speak and kind of that difference between Donald Trump is, is probably a, a benefit on its own, even though their other criteria is very different between them as a governor and a congressman, a former Democrat. But I also think to remind a lot of folks listening and watching the show right now who may or may not have initially supported President Trump in 2016, he was a total newcomer uh, to Republican politics and uh, you know had donated a lot of money to Democrats in both sides, like most business people do. Uh, but certainly uh, he was a total newcomer. And look where he turned out to be. 
uh, one of most of our listeners, probably favorite presidents ever, the picks he made to the U.S. Supreme Court, uh, the conservative policies on the border, fighting back against the bureaucracy, and uh, paying the price for doing that as he has, continues to pay the price now. So um, I think that, that, uh, that a lot of folks in that Trump world would probably be more comfortable with Tulsi. I think traditional Republicans might be a little more concerned if you've been voting conservative. But I think what 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 she brought up that was right, Logan, is that for independents who are looking for someone they know isn't just controlled by the Republican Party or even the Trump wing of the Republican Party, that, that does, especially in a year where Biden's losing popularity amongst young people, it does bring uh, some interesting yeah. opportunities. Yeah, I'm sure that is the conversation that's happening. I have no insider knowledge to know that's the conversation happening, but just looking at the facts, and the facts is she would bring in a very different group of voters that currently President Trump may not have, and currently Joe Biden may have. They may be leaning more towards that way, but if you can find someone who can kind of get that, you know, it's a crowd that's on X, the crowd that's listening to Rogan. Uh, this is a, which she is a regular on. She obviously has a show on X. It is a different group of voters who are not as activated uh, to vote traditionally Republican. Yeah. So I think it's an interesting choice. Uh, I think every, most of the people on the list are, are you know, well qualified. I, I don't, yeah, I I don't look at that and go. On the, on the, that aren't on the list that likely are that just Laura Ingram didn't have on that list. Yeah. Again, a lot of that does come down to where you're asking people. So if you're asking people in South Carolina – what's on the top of their mind that's different than what may be on the top yeah. of mind somewhere, somewhere and we else. got people all over the country let's go to brad in pennsylvania on line one watching or uh, listening on xm radio that's great sirius xm go ahead brad well thank you for everything you do i actually have three names for the trump ticket i think for a vice president like dr ben carson yep for ag trey gowdy how could you go wrong with trey gowdy secretary of defense general flynn you know i think it's interesting <laughs> Start the first one. Ben Carson, obviously another friend of the show, yes. a friend of the family, so someone who would be an excellent pick. And I think everyone would- How old's been these days? How old? Yeah. I can check his age. I, mean, I would assume he's- Because I think there's going to be some choice making around that too. Mm, 72. So, I, you know, I think that, again, you have to consider that because a lot, not necessarily because it's the right thing, but because the media- Well, Tulsi, you get a, someone in their early 40s. Oh, yeah, you know? a lot of the others are- yeah. are, 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 are in that range. Uh, in the 50s and under group. So- because the media is making age such a big deal, and they're trying because they don't want to make it just about Joe Biden. Because uh, Donald, but even when they compare the two, they say it's not so much age; it's what they look like on stage and how they perform. And you can't deny that when Donald Trump's on stage and performs, he goes for an hour and a half and seems like he's loving it, and you know, hits back, punches back. And but again, I think Ben Carson could be on that list. I just, if you're worried about age, 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 and whether or not he wants to to do it. Um, is a, that's, a, that's a big part of the job, too, yeah. Let's, uh, is if you want to be the vice president of the United States. What we're seeing with, with Harris right now is um, maybe it's not always the s smartest political move. Yeah. I think let's head up quick. Can we take a quick call? Can we go to Daniel in California on line yeah. four? Daniel's got uh, his point of view. He's watching on YouTube, which we appreciate as well. Daniel, welcome. Hello, you guys. Thank you for all your hard work. I appreciate you guys. If I was Trump's consultant, Tulsi's a good choice, but I 100,000% will tell Trump to pick uh, – Vivek Ramaswamy. Vivek could watch his back. Vivek comes from an immigrant family. He also a uh, good representation of minority movement going to conservatism. And as well, he's young relatively to his age of field. So that would be my consultation about President Trump. You know, it's interesting. I think Vivek, one, could definitely land in the administration. I don't know if he's been involved in the political process long enough for to reach enough Republicans because he popped up only in the primary, really. But I think what he can do is end up in the administration in a prominent role, potentially even cabinet, and then continue to build on what you're you're talking about uh, over the next four, because this is going to be a four-year presidency if President Trump wins. I mean, we're, this is all assuming that President Trump wins. And uh, again, it's a four-year presidency. So one of those people or, or, or multiple of those people will be running for president uh, to to replace him after that because of the bar we have in the Constitution. 